Hello, students. Welcome to today's live class. So I think we should wait for like few more minutes for the others to join. And uh, I think we're not okay. So yes, and uh, just a word of precaution. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Uh, just a word of precaution is that it's raining heavily over here, and if in case if my stream just goes off, just think that. The current went off, and uh, it's really raining here. So uh, I'm not sure whether it's raining in the other parts here in Kerala as well, but here it's very much. So yes. So it's 8:40 now. We'll wait for a few more minutes also for the other students to join. I think my so I think it's fine now. Just okay. Now it's fine. So yes, so uh, in the previous lessons we were discussing about French Revolution and how storming of Bastille and how these common citizens, these normal people, they just broke out a revolution against the empire, and that was in 1789. So we are going to discuss right now from today's class about Napoleon Bonaparte. So yes, so we just wait for the other aspirants as well to join because. Uh, they might be only getting the notifications uh, for some people it might take 2 3 minutes to receive notifications so i think we should just let them join us first and yes i'm also planning to launch a live session for uh, combined study in a way and uh, thing is that it will be a live session and i will be studying and you study along with me that is uh, i'm intended to for either saturday or sunday it totally depends when is most suitable for you all for the other aspirants i'm thinking it's on saturday Uh, we'll have a short session wherein the spectrum book, the history book. So uh, the first chapter will be studied together, and uh, it's not that I'll be explaining the chapter. No, it's nothing like that. Reading the chapter. So I'll just explain few instructions of how to do it, and then I'll go about and read my book. And you also do the same thing. You also get the book before Saturday, or you could get a PDF download from the Google, and then you study along with me. So uh, this will be a trial session. The classes will be. the combined study live class will be hardly for 2 2 to 2 and a half hours and i don't think it would take 2 hours is 1 1 and a half hours will be more than enough for the first chapter and uh, after that after i think it is successful and uh, you are able to follow it through we'll have a longer sessions wherein i will be studying or i'll be reading first a uh, newspaper and after that how to take notes on everything so i'll be doing my work along with myself and you also do the same thing For example, if Saturday is uh, that plan goes well, probably the next day, Sunday, uh, the live session will be for six hours. Probably it's just an example. Okay, so uh, probably my live session will start at eight o'clock in the morning. I'll start off with reading newspaper. I'll just give you few instructions, and then I'll start reading my newspaper, and you also start reading your newspapers. And after two hours, when we are done reading the newspaper, after done taking notes uh, from the newspaper. We'll start revising something else, or we'll we'll start making notes, and uh, it's sort of like when you have a group to study yourself with, you becomes more productive. All right, because it's sort of like an outside accountability. So I think this is a very good idea. So let's see on Saturday. Do let me know in the comment section whether you like the idea, whether you want it on Saturday or some other day. Sunday is more convenient for you, then it's fine. But we should have a trial day for sure. Trial day will be just. One one and a half hours maximum. We'll see it. So yes, uh, slowly, slowly, the aspirants are joining the live session.
which one is best to prepare upsc exams or can the mechanical engineer job if you have any suggestion see one thing is that uh, there is no comparison between what is best and what is bad it all totally depends on you because for example if i as a person i cannot do uh, a job for ca for chartered accountant because i'm very bad at it it's totally depend upon what is right for you and what where works for you okay and uh, you know same for example i think we have seen in three years it's nothing like what is the best career but what is best for you i think it was amir gan telling to uh, madhavan's father saying that how do you expect if dhoni uh, becomes a singer he would be a terrible singer because he is destined to be a cricketer so it's totally depend upon your heart desires what you want to be go after that do not look what society wants from you or do not see what your parents or your family expects out of you what is right for you go after that so yes so i think we are done with all the doubts we'll start with the class so yes so we are going to study about napoleon bonaparte he initially started off as a poor person he was born into a very poor family though he led france he uh, later on became the lieutenant of the army and eventually he became the prime minister and yet at the end he became the monarchical head which is the king so he was not uh, born as a prince he was not born as a son of a king and we know that during those period during those 70s 80s and 90s period uh, that is during 1700s that is a time when it was regressive society and society cannot accept someone else to be a monarchical king it is supposed to be hereditary so how come a common person like him and he is not just any other uh, person he was born in italy he was born out of parents of uh, his poor parents his mother and father were italians and he was born into very humble and poor family and he somehow got a scholarship to enroll himself to an army school and that's how he just rose to you know power it's sort of like luck favored him something like that so we are going to discuss that and how he formulated the revolutionized uh, revolutionized france and yes yesterday's class if you remember uh, not yesterday day before yesterday yesterday we didn't have a class so they before yesterday's class we discussed that after the revolution broke out we thought this is will be this will be a very good start yes right like overpowering the monarchical system just throwing out the king and just executing him we thought it will be a very good method and the citizens will be able to look after themselves the problem was that certain groups groups they're not just any common groups dictatorial form of groups came into power like jacobians and all so they were like you know the terrors of du during those period and they just executed anyone who just uh, voiced themselves against these jacobians or these organizations who were leading the france so the problem was that what we thought uh, the uh, france system was during the monarchical system is even more worse when all these jacobians are ruling over there and they are highly administrators sort of like ias officers or bureaucrats you know looking after the nation they are not monarchical power but sort of like a bureaucrats and officials and clerical people so after that comes napoleon sort of like a savior he comes like a savior he saves france from high economic crisis and high social insecurity because uh, during this uh, jacobian spirit we all know it was it was a reign of terror that is he guillotined n number of people he just executed everyone and sort of like a peace and you know so sorry so everything was totally kind of restored at least to a partial level during the napoleon spirit i'm sorry i had a call so yeah so uh so yeah during his spirit he tried to you know restore the economy the social structure and everything he tried to you know bring it to a very maximum level very good level the problem is that we all know what happens when power gets into one's hand when just common man's hand he becomes blind with all the power and he just becomes uh, you know reckless and at last he will fall down so that's what happened to napoleon same thing over here he had lots of power he did save our nation and he became you know all these snobbish haughty person and he he was overthrown and uh, eventually he was killed so yes we're going to discuss all that here and this was just a brief introduction who napoleon was so yes napoleon when the revolution broke out napoleon joined the army of the new government we know when the re revolution broke out in 1789 so we kind of like consider the you know demolition of the bastille and that uh, you know the the palace structure we take it as a base note when the revolution started so that is 1789 and in october 1795 it was almost like 
you know uh, it luck is like sort of luck is for you know uh, kind of like favoring him or you know god is on his side something similar to that all these royalists that is all these jacobians and officials sort of asked him uh, you know uh, for his uh, you know protections and uh, uh, that is uh, you know these people were against them so these government want protection against all these all these royalists and all these people and we all know it was not problem of the france when these revolution broke out we know what happened to the all the neighboring states that is all these britain and austria austria especially why because these antonin that this princes was from the uh, austria so all these nations were intimidated by these people these common citizens power for those reasons only there were many people many uh, you know even within the nation when within the family members of all these royal people were trying to uh, overpower all these uh, organizations or these kind of associations being formed so that was the time when napoleon came as a savior and defended everyone kind of you know came like a protection officer and yes the second one is a napoleon and his gunners greeted thousands of royalists with a cannonade that is this is what uh, when you say greeted it's not like you know uh, we are we are happy to have you it's sort of like you know you want to face us this is what you're going to get sort of like a threatening basis and this kind of like scared off all these people and napoleon bonaparte became the hero of the hour and was hailed throughout the paris as a savior of the french republic why do you say republic elected representatives until then it was monarchical system and when all these royal people and from the outside and inside the nations came here they were scared off by these napoleon bonaparte and his army of battalion so that's what the first initial you know uh, action done by him the second one would be napoleon's italian campaign we all know when what happens when we become powerful we try to get for big, bigger things so that what happened over here in france when france regained their freedom they france regained their consciousness they tried to you know attack other nations as well so that's what ho- happened here in 1796 the directory appointed napoleon to lead a french army against the forces of austria and the kingdom of sardinia why because they are constantly being as a threat to the french republic for those reasons only he was led uh, he led a campaign against them and napoleon took command of the french army of italy on 27 march 1796 and leading it to a successful <laughs> and yes leading it to on a successful invasions of italy by crossing the alps so how can an, a nation with a uh, when i say a nation it's not actually a nation form because we all know what happened in yesterday's class national convention was there but it wasn't formed fully it wasn't you know it didn't come to about just few jacobians and robins few all these kind of people were there it wasn't having a typical political structure inside the nation so how can such a nation go and attack a some other nation so they have they are getting lots of military power through that so this in a way boosted the confidence of these french officials and the french citizens and the collective conscience also were uplifted by napoleon's victory and napoleon swift into italy and won a series of remarkable victories which made napoleon national hero in france yes and uh, this is just a fun fact because just these are important uh, with point of view of your prelims your prelims are going to come up with all these questions like who was called to be the little corporal so that was napoleon okay so such kind of factual questions are going to come mainly for your prelims but your mains perspective all these informations and all the conceptual clarity and uh, napoleon had conquered italy when he was just 26 years old and uh, you know like here in india also we join army at a very young age so by the time we are 27 28 we'll be reaching a uh, you know a lieutenant or a good post in an army system and napoleon egypt campaign even though it wasn't a uh, very good i wouldn't suggest this is to be a victory but even then you know th- th- that was a period when there was no social media no forms of news or advertisement or any forms of you know propagation so what happens they wouldn't know what happened over here so they thought you know we got some form of like a victory over here but actually what happened is that uh, they wanted to uh, you know stop in, uh, they wanted to invade england's colony in india that during those period that is during these period they had a colony here in india we know during buxar 
that was when uh, england finally got the revenue rights over here in india so they were here to invade india india was a colony of england and napoleon uh, and if you would uh, you know study at least some parts of the modern history you would know that france and britain were always neck by neck that is they were constant enemies and we know that these britishers try to you know subdue these portuguese dutch and all but always these france and britain they were always you know fighting among themselves to have the better conquer but ultimately we know what happened britain came out to be uh, you know more of a victorious part and that's how they conquered the whole part of nation and the india and uh, napoleon was unable to repeat the success he had achieved here in europe and they were highly uh, outnumbered if i would say and uh, if you re remember or seen the movie of mummy you will know that the nose of the sphinx the statue the nose is not here the reason is that his army officials they practice target shooting here at the nose of the sphinx so that's uh, that's uh, through napoleon's army only this uh, historical monumental statue lost its nose and yes so that's a fact apart and uh, napoleon's army was pinned down in egypt by the british navy under the command of admiral Horatio Nelson and uh, the French army maintained a very good military system, but there was total failure in terms of navy. Their navy wasn't very strong, but Britain's navy was par excellence. That is, they knew that the navy system was their, you know, the biggest backbone or the strength that they had. And the British navy destroyed the French navy on the Nile River, and Napoleon was forced to retreat to France and regroup. However, Napoleon managed to keep stories about his setbacks out of the newspapers, and thereby remained a great hero to the people of France. Yes, like I said, that is a time when there were no newspapers, no advertisements, or no other forms of propagations. So, in this case, the people of France actually thought that he got some victory or something he gained out of it, and this was actually a very good time uh, when uh, when he came back to here in France. that is in 1799 he came back came back in france this was a period when people were totally done with all these jacobians these reign of terror they just wanted someone to overpower them because they were dreading these people and they were constantly threatening all these people and the economy was totally shattered the social structure were uh, you know going haywire so they these citizens normal french people wanted someone to save them and that's how the napoleon bonaparte came as real hero and uh, we all know what he did <laughs> sorry he did a coup coup is actually sort of like uh, you know in bangladesh uh, similar thing happened that is when the military power comes and overpower or comes and you know just overthrow the government system for example if the scenario if we take it here in india suppose a political system is not very good suppose you know the modi government or the government before him that was manmohan singh government uh, or the nda i'm just just giving citing in a just an example and these are just uh, you know uh, hypothetical examples do not take them seriously suppose their organizations or the political systems are not going very well uh, the military could you know decide for themselves and overpower or overthrow the government and rule by themselves so the same thing happened over here coup the attack which means coup military coup and they came here and seized power in 1799 and the french people were dissatisfied of the revolutionary turmoil turmoil is what happened after the revolutions they thought they finally got rid of the king now they live peacefully but that didn't happen why because they were nobody to lead them okay lots of people came together but these peasants or these common people and uh, they had no administrative knowledge no skills in terms of political system they didn't know how to look after nations because this is something new to them so for those reasons they had huge turmoil and the people or the associations <coughs> which came to power uh, so they thought it would help them like the robins pier but instead they turn out to be a sort of like a threat to these people So uh, Napoleon Bonaparte came to power through the coup uh, the attack that is the military overthrow of the government this would end the 10 year period and uh, in 1789 uh, through uh, you know storming of the bastille tower was happened in 1789 and from there to 1799 it was totally you know total haywire turmoil system uh, situation here in France and that came to a net when Napoleon came here and overthrew the whole uh, jacobians and all these people so that's that's it when this person proclaim himself to be first the prime minister and then he becomes the emperor that is he becomes a prime minister or some a custodian form in 1799 
But in 1804, he makes himself to be the emperor, and he is not born a king. He is not born a prince. His parents are not the king, but he declares himself to be the king. And yes, people also, the citizens also went along with it because he turned out to be a best person, uh, you know, in comparison to every others or others even before that who governed them. So in 1804, Napoleon decided to make himself the emperor, and the French voters supported him. On December 2nd, 1804, in Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, Napoleon crowned himself as emperor. And this is a movie, and、uh, this is just a movie clip. It's not the real picture. Thousands watched as a new emperor took the crown from the Pope and placed it on his own head. Like if you have seen any other. Coronations of any other prince or the princesses, or、uh, being a king or a queen, you must have seen that the Pope is the one to place the king, you、uh, know, everything in the place. But what happened over here? He just took it from the Pope and he placed it among himself. That is by himself. And this is what shows his authoritarian figure, his power over everything. And、uh, with the gesture, Napoleon signaled that he was more powerful than the Church. Which had traditionally crowned the rulers of France, not just the France throughout the whole the European nations. What we can find is that it is a pope who will be crowning the next emperor or the next successor. And Napoleon dominated the continent of Europe, and、uh, he what started off as a very good thing turned out to be a little bit ugly. He turned out to be sort of like a bully. That is, you know how bully will be. He'll be bullying all the other people who are less powerful than him, or someone who is less, you know, powerful, or you know, even more vulnerable in front of his eyes. So he started dominating the whole of continent of Europe, and he started to bully all these、uh, nations or the people under them. And between 1803 and that was like, you know, he will he say something, and he expect all the other nations to follow that. So that's how he became a very bad person, a notorious person in front of everyone's eyes. And between 1803 and 1809, Napoleon won a series of great battles. That is, he would just go out there and he would, you know, just fight them. Why is he doing that? Don't know why, but he would just do that. And this battle is considered Napoleon's greatest victory. And Napoleon's empire stretched from Atlantic Ocean to Russia. And、uh, nationalism is a very good emotion that all citizens require. But aggressive nationalism, thinking sort of like an extremist, thinking that my nation is supreme and we have the right to dominate all the other nations, is not a very good emotions to have. And、uh, yes, the greatest threat was from England because throughout it followed through. And France dominated on land, but England dominated on the seas. Like I said, you know, nobody could come、uh, and you know and par with the England's navy, navy powers. And I think in the Pirates of Caribbean also we know that they were, they had a very systems for all these navy systems and all. And Britain's naval supremacy saved England from invasions. They would have that is the France would have invaded Britain if Britain's naval system wasn't very good. But you know, thankfully it was good. And、uh, Berlin and Milan decrees of 1806 and 1807, Napoleon realized he couldn't defeat England military, so he attempted to destroy England economically. That is,、uh, there is actually a policy led by Napoleon. He would say that it's called continental policy. He would say to all the other European nations that, okay, from here onwards, you cannot have any sorts of international ties or trade ties with England. That is, you cannot sell or buy any products and services from England. So they wanted to cripple the、uh, England's economy, but that didn't happen. Why? Because they had the biggest market source that anyone could ever have, which was India. So it totally didn't affect、uh, the Britain how the France thought it would, because you know they had India. And、uh, you know how this England retaliated or you know took a revenge. They asked. Even England also have other nations that would agree to them. So they asked、uh, the neutral nations, the nations who are not supporting either of them. They asked to have no, for, you know,、uh, any forms of trading ties with France. And France is a nation which have no natural resources by themselves. I think in whole of the world, I think France will be the only nations to have no other forms of natural resources, and they completely dependent upon other nations for raw materials. And they only had money and the income or something like that, but they didn't have the natural resources for themselves. That was a big problem for France. And、uh, what happens? Prussia. Uh, that is, I'm talking about the continental policy. Okay, when France asked other nations to not have any trade ties with England, all the other nations agreed. But Russia, Russia wanted, you know, 
raw materials and everything else because uh, britain was very good in textile industry so they completely dependent upon the britain and uh, when france asked all these nations to stop having ties it seriously affected russia and this in a way sort of like created enmity between russia and france because of britain and uh, this was the extent of Nap napoleon's empire this was france uh, this is spain this is italy and uh, yes this is britain okay the small nation that we find over here but small nation went out to conquer most parts of the world including india and uh, we are still you know i cannot say we developed or moved out from it we are still trying to get out from the economic debts that we had because of the britain's uh, i would say plundering and looting over here and peninsula war of 1808 to 1814 that is napoleon invaded spain portugal to further expand his empire and spain and portugal rebelled against napoleon because now they felt that this is not the time that we should you know be ourselves and fight for ourselves they understood that we all have to that this the other nations the other european nations understood the power of unity that yes now we have to be together and then fight against them but still they were overpowered or overthrown by napoleon and thereby placing napoleon had a brother joseph and he placed his brother in spain as an ex king and this probably wasn't a very good idea because the people of of uh, this place that is of spain didn't really like it the citizens obviously would favor their own nation they wouldn't like for example here in india suppose in a scenario someone comes and overpowers our president and prime minister and uh, a france person will be kept here as a president and prime minister when they conquered our territory obviously we wouldn't like because we have a sense of nationalism and uh, no i am not an ias but i will be an ias hopefully this year or next year i don't know but i am sure i'll be an ia someday so yes okay so uh, that so these people the citizens of spain were in merry much you know happy with joseph being the uh, the ruler or the governor and after years of guerrilla warfare spain and portugal were successful in expelling french forces guerrilla warfare is actually they'll be you know hiding themselves among the bushes for example spain is totally a foreign nation for the france army and they have no idea of the territorial places and all so these Spain people or the Spanish people would hide themselves behind all these, you know, mountains or bushes and you know trees and all. And when these armies come, they just, you know, just surprise them or come as a sort of like shock and then overpower them. So because of all these guerrilla warfare, they were able to get rid of these France and French forces. And uh, here it's written here in the footnote what guerrilla warfare is. When I put the slides in the Telegram, do you know, read through it? I think you must have heard of what guerrilla warfare is, and uh, if you don't know, I'll give you further clarifications on that. And Napoleon and uh, Louis. So just see that from here onwards, we could see, you know, slowly by slowly, Napoleon is losing his powers. Or uh, what happens when we become, you know, when, for example, if it's all victory for us, we'll be more like, you know, very much confident. But a small setback for us, this will totally affect our emotional intelligence, and we'll be like, okay. somewhere the other people can you know uh, be powerful than me so that kind of feelings comes into our mind and then we start feeling that we will be overthrown by someone some day so this will hamper our confidence all of it together oh yeah you're yeah, welcome thank you so much and thank you so much for joining the live session and yes i would like to uh, you know repeat myself again saturday or sunday totally depends on your wish or uh, just suggest me a day saturday or sunday whenever you are free i am thinking of planning uh, for a group discussion or a group study wherein you know i'll be studying my work and you will be doing your work so uh, this weekend i thought we'll start off with spectrum history's first chapter which is about sepoy mutiny and i'll just give you the instructions of how to study i'll give you instructions of how to study and read and I'll just give you just few minutes of instructions and then i'll be reading it and you along with it just read with it read with me and study with me and after end of one one and a half hours we'll be done with reading the book so this way will actually you know we need a study partner to study in some cases because i as a person i study well when i have some people doing along with it because i'm very kind of a lazy person i procrastinate a lot so uh, this helps me a lot so i'm just thinking that this might help you also and after uh 
मुझे उतनी हिंदी नहीं आती पर यू नो आई ट्राई माई बेस्ट ओके सो आफ्टर दिस ट्रायल सेशन ऑफ सैटरडे और संडे वील हैव अ लॉन्गर लाइव सेशन इट विल बी लाइव सेशन ऑल सेशन विल बी लाइव वेर इन प्रॉब्ली ऑन मंडे और ट्यूजडे द क्लास और द ग्रुप डिस्कशन और ग्रुप स्टडी विल स्टार्ट ऑफ बाई एट ओ क्लॉक Uh, we'll start with reading newspaper i'll give you general instructions of how to you know take notes and how to you know study what is important for newspaper and uh, you know i'll do my work and you do your work and uh, in between i'll be giving you instructions of how to do it and after 2 hours we'll be done with the newspaper we'll get on to the other subjects and other revisions and other schedules so after the first trial the next live session that is group study will be a longer one and if you like the idea do let me know that and also do let me know of the date okay and uh, it's either saturday or sunday because that is will be when when most of the students will be completely free for that so yes coming back to the class okay i'm actually a south indian i'm a malayali so uh, i don't know much of hindi i totally understand and uh, i think i'm not a very good speaker but i speak okay so uh, and i don't want to fumble while i speak in hindi that's the reason why okay i'll try my best i'll, I'll try to repeat same sentence again in hindi uh to yahan baat kar rahe hai ki uh, napoleon and louis on the purchase of 1803 he acquired land from spain in 18 uh, 1800 that uh, agar aap sapne yahan map dekhi hogi to you can understand that this is france and this is spain so in 1800s uh that is uh, the spain spain had debts or you know uh, they wanted to you know uh, kar chukana tha so kar chukane ke liye unhone apne land bech diya to whom to france so that's how they acquired land for example sort of like a collateral security when you have, don't have money you say okay please buy my land and just extend me of my uh, loans and all and stipulated that france couldn't sell land without consulting spain and they actually gave a uh, Okay, very good that you are a CA final aspirant. So, uh, see, uh, you be getting uh, IAs or IRs totally depends on our rank and most importantly our priority. So, uh, try to get maximum marks and you will be asked to you know tick on this thing. And as a CA, I think IRs that is Indian Revenue would be most suitable for you since you have the CA background or the Commerce background. is just a suggestions but it doesn't mean that ias will always be the most sought after uh, career for civil services hi so uh, it's totally depends on your wish but uh, you know it's just try for your maximum mark that's all so uh, and they said that they uh, they gave the land but they kept a clause that you cannot sell off the land without my consent you need to sell off the land or you need to give the land to someone else you need our permission first so but Uh, he sold Louisiana territory to U.S. without consulting Spain for fifteen million dollars, and Spain was obviously so furious because they had sort of like enmity between United States. So this uh, sort of like created a tension. What happens when you lose allies? When you lose allies, they becomes your enemies. Okay, it's very easy for allies to turn into. Yeah, what is your doubt? I'm very good. Yeah, so you know, just ask me your doubt. No issues. so a uh, thing is that it's easier when your allies becomes your enemies they'll you know start taking necessary actions sort of like in a way to curb you and napoleon's ill fated invasions of france when napoleon you know he started thinking that okay i'm very much confident i have lots of territory under me i need thought he could you know control the power here of russia but russia we know it was tsar alexander i think i have a picture of him oh yeah yeah Sir Alexander, so he is even more a worser person than Napoleon. So there is no way that uh, that he could he could overpower Russia, and uh, Russia was there, and Russia was sort of like a silent spectator. They hated Napoleon's guts, but still, see, you can ask your doubt. You don't have to, you know, just just ask your doubt. Just write that in the comment section. Okay, so he hated Napoleon's guard, but they didn't, you know, wanted to go yet. They didn't want to instigate the Russian power, and uh, but Napoleon invaded Russia and captured Moscow, 
and Russia. But the problem was that we know, uh, you know, they had the territorial power. But you know what the Russians did? They deprived all these state and all these places that they captured with all the food necessities and shelter. And what happens when the, when we capture a place? And what's the point if it's a desert? Same thing happened over here. It was completely deserted. There were no lack of shelter, food, or clothing, and this, in a way, forced Napoleon and his army to go back. And also, guerrilla practices were very much being practiced all over through Europe because they knew that the military power of Napoleon cannot be overpowered. For those reasons, they, you know, uh, uh, adopted this guerrilla warfare. And through this guerrilla warfare, uh, he lost almost like three fourths, almost like almost of his army. And uh, yes, this is. I'm sorry if the clarity is not very good. So this pictorial representations of Napoleon and his army being taken over by the guerrilla. That is, all these people will be hiding behind, and then they will come and attack us. They will give us a scare. And yes, so he was devastated because of his invasions to Russia, and the climate wasn't very good. It wasn't favorable to these people. And yes, the, the place was completely deserted. They had no food, no shelter, no nothing. And they just died because of all these ill situations, and also with the guerrilla warfare. Yeah, so uh, you can ask me the doubt. It's okay, just ask. And what happened? And he, as a supreme leader, he as a supreme power, came down. So what happened before that? And that is Napoleon's empire was too complex, and uh, too complex in the sense that what happens when you have, for example, in a school, when a teacher have thirty or thirty five students strength, it is easier for her to control the class. And what happens when the class comprises of hundred people or two hundred people? It will be very much difficult for the uh, teacher or the class teacher to control the students. Same thing happened over here. The territory, I think, uh, where is the map? I did have the extension. Okay, this was the extent, and even they tried to, uh, you know, here and all. So when it, you know, it's sort of like in here and there. So when the territorial expansion is very vast, and also when the communication system is not very well established during those periods, it will be difficult for us to, you know, to control. That is the reason why even here in India, when we had the Mughal system. Lots of nawabs and peshwas were assigned in different different places, and after the 18th century, oh, how I managed timetable? Uh, I think it's sort of like time management. Uh, I have made a video on how to make a planner. That is how to have a uh, you know sort of like a timetable for sort of like beginners for civil services, and uh, you know just do check out the video. And uh, is that what you asked? And yes, so yes, uh, and yeah, so that's the reason. And after the 18th century, these nawabs and peshwas they became themselves. They proclaimed themselves to be the king. So uh, you know, so same problem over here. There weren't any peshwas or nawabs here, but the problem was that since it was too complex, and uh, the other foreign nations also start resenting the Napoleon, it started to take toll on him. And also these officials and these militaries and these army soldiers, they started. Okay, they started, you know, being exhausted. They being starting being tired, and we all know that it's easier when you fight against the person that we know in front of us. But what happens when they come in behind in shadows and hiding behind all these bushes? It's hard to see your enemy. So guerrilla warfare was something which totally, you know, threatened their uh, existence. And rising spirit of nationalism swept through Europe. And because we all know Napoleon was starting to be a very big bully, they wanted some or the other way to just get rid of him. And since he was constantly up on the war, and we know France as a nation was just reviving from the economical crisis, but again, these war and all these campaigns because of Napoleon, they were extensively, you know, having again economic problems and crisis because of that. And wars of liberation started in 1830 when Prussia and Austria declared war on France. Prussia is actually uh, present-day Germany. I cannot say uh, Germany is Prussia, but most of the part of Germany. Was Prussia before, and uh, Napoleon was defeated at the Battle of Leipzig by Austria, Prussia, and Russian forces. These people, everyone came together against one common enemy, which is this France. 
uh, not exactly France Napoleon Bonaparte. They had no problems with France, but they had the ruler Napoleon, and they had issues with him. So, and Napoleon was forced to retreat back to France, and he was, you know, taken back. He said, you know, these people came and said that that's it. No more war for you. You cannot keep on, you know, marching towards the other European nations and threatening us. So he went, and you know, there is a small uh, island over here in the coast of Italy, somewhere over here. So he, uh, yeah, somewhere over here. So uh, he went and stayed there, sort of like you know, he ran away from here. And uh, it's written over here. Al island of Elba is located off the west coast of Italy. And Napoleon was forced to abdicate his throne and exile to Elba. Uh, and uh, allies also countries fighting against Napoleon. Even the friendly nations also started to go against them. And uh, the other nations, the allies also invaded France and captured Paris. That is the capital of France. And the conquest of Vienna. That is now the Europeans felt that, okay, now the biggest threat of our, you know, uh, I think I would say economical, social and all the threatening factors being taken care of. Now we need to declare, uh, you know, sort of like a statement or a constitution of how everything will be. So that's how they come to uh, Congress of Vienna. It was uh, there in Vienna. And uh, they formulated certain goals and certain aspirations for themselves. The first one is that reconference, uh, conference to reconstruct war on Europe, that is balance of power. And for those reasons, Whatever land that was conquested by Napoleon was given back. And yes, the monarchical system was re-established. We know that Louis XVI was uh, taken care of. He was killed in angry mobs. But then his brother was uh, made the next ruler of France. And major settlements of Congo Vienna was that Russia, was, uh, received, uh, Russia received Finland and most of Poland. And Prussia received part of Poland and parts of the German kingdom along with Rhine River. And England received... The colonial, uh, that is like Britain having colony here in India. France also had here in Sri Lanka, South Africa and Malta and all. So they were given to England. And flaws in the Congress Vienna. Why Congress Vienna cannot be said to be a foolproof was that, again, we all know monarchical system is not actually a very good way of demo democracy. But again, it was given back to the monarchical power and denied national groups independence and unity. For example, we know that Finland at present is an independent nation, but it was taken over by Russia. So certain like Finns, Finn means, uh, you know, Finland, and you know, Poland people, Belgian people, and Norwegian people, they were left with their homeland, and they were asked to join the other nations. So that was totally, uh, I would say, injustice done to them. And these are the important nations, uh, important people during those period. And... Uh, Yes, result of Congress of Vienna. This is the uh, reformulated map, I would say. And uh, this was Finland. Now, Finland is a very, you know, sort of like a long nation. Now, Finland is an uh, independent nation. Here we have Sweden and all. So, this was given to Russia. And even Poland also, uh, yeah, yeah, Poland over here was given to Russia. So, that is totally uh, injustice to them because they wanted to have their own ethnic identity. And uh, again, Napoleon, he felt that, okay, Napoleon. You know, when he came to know about this Congress of Vienna, he was like, how dare they do that? All my hard work were, you know, totally overthrown. Whatever lands that I conquered, who are they? What gave them the right to, you know, to give back all these land to these rightful owners? And from there, he, uh, from the Alba, he returned to U uh, France. He wanted to reestablish his lost empire. And his return will only last 100 days because uh, we know what happened. After the Waterloo battle, he was killed. That is in St. Helena and uh, it was, uh, yeah, we have a tomb over here also in Paris and it was unfortunate because he thought he will have a second innings over here but he couldn't have it and these are just facts here. Uh, when Napoleon, that we all know his picture that whatever that we have in our mind is a red color dress with a black silk over here but what happened in Waterloo, the war that he came back for, he wore a white one. So, you know, in a way sort of like it jinxed it. So, it's sort of like uh, astrology or superstition, but I don't know. And uh, same here, all the allies removed Napoleon's once and for all. That is British and Prussia. They were led by Duke of Wellington and General Butcher. Uh, these were the representatives of Britain and Prussia. And Napoleon was very much defeated and was forced to surrender. And uh, he was killed in St. Helena. 
and legacy of napoleon is that i would say that what we have the penal code system all these you know judicial and legal systems where came in here because of napoleon bonaparte until his period there were no such things like penal codes and all these acts and all so only after him the penal codes and all came so he once said uh, in a statement that no one will remember me for the 41 wars that i won he actually had 41 wars and he won and no one will remember me for the 41 wars but people will remember me for my contribution for the legal system so in those way he was very good that is he gave a contribution to the legal system which cannot be replaced by anything else and this in a way we are totally indebted to him and we even as are the other nation as well so what was the uh, contributions or what are the achievements in the administrative structures that he done he was a very good ruler i think i would say only problem was that he was hungry for power and uh, you know he just he was over ambitious and he led the excavations i mean led the campaigns against all the other nations and he became over ambitious and in a way very much haughty so that is a problem why which led to his decline or his downfall i would say but he was actually a very good administrator he brought in very much very good system he centralized the local government and delivered from the disorder of the revolution an advantage in government uh, education is that the government control of education from primary grades to college until then there were no such curriculum for the school students that is they were probably the church order them to study about the origin you know? so whatever the church gave them they will do that but here on was the government understood the importance of education so the educate system from here onwards was controlled by the government and restored friend relations between france and catholic church and guaranteed uh, religious freedom to all faiths uh, that is when he it is believed to be that that when he marched towards egypt uh, he said to all these egyptian people that he is actually a very adherent follower of islam and we don't know whether that's true or he just said that to sort of like convince them but he he actually had uh, you know a very good tolerance level to all the religions which was around him and improvement of france finances because he collected taxes fairly from french citizens he didn't show that okay only the lower estate only the third estate should give me that's nothing like that everyone people were considered to be citizens and not like subjects of the king and establishment of the bank of france so that is a very good thing loan for the loan facilities and home for depositions and improved france public works that is infrastructure development built roads bridges canals and beautified uh, paris so a uh, lots of contributions are there and yes the most important the code of laws was set by napoleon and the other fun facts over here is just you know just read through it uh when i just upload it in my telegram channel just read through it because you know chances are they might come here for your preliminary examination so that's it so uh, today's class was very short about napoleon bonaparte and uh, today is wednesday tomorrow also will be about world history we'll just continue about it and uh, i think on friday onwards we'll start with a uh, geography class and uh, do let me know when you want the live combined study session whether it's saturday or sunday and uh, yes the first session the live combined study will be on your spectrum book the history spectrum uh, your modern india so uh, do be ready with the book or if you don't have the book it's okay you can just download it uh, you will get free pdf copy and i think you will get the revised edition also latest one also will be available in the internet so do that do follow that so yes bye you all uh, so i'll